Hello, I'm Steve Nunn, President and CEO of The Open Group. Welcome to Toolkit Tuesday, where we highlight the various components and leading experts of the Architects Toolkit, a collated portfolio of the most pertinent technology standards for enterprise architects. During the series, I'll be calling on a number of recognized experts who will bring their particular insights on how to most effectively use the various tools in the Architects Toolkit. We'll have a mix of interviews, panel sessions, and pre-recorded presentations along the way. While all standards of the Open Group are designed so they can be adopted independently of one another, the greatest value for an organization can be derived when they're used in unison. The sum of the parts should be greater than the whole. In the Architects Toolkit, we have collated a portfolio of the most pertinent ones for architects together, all in one place. For most of these tools, certification from the Open Group is also available, so practitioners can demonstrate that they have the skills required, and recruiters can take the guesswork out of the recruitment process, all backed up by our Open Badges program. What do you call a group of architects? It's one of those old EA jokes, the sorts that when enterprise architects get together at summits, they, they ask. And a classic response would often be an argument, for example, or, or mischievously a screen, as the more EAs you add, the less clear you can see your way through. But whatever the name, one thing we often agree on, ironically, is that there will be more opinions in the room than people. But that is a good thing. We must keep doing that. One of the unfortunate consequences of AI and social media can be misinformation and echo chamber effects, where the opinions in the same room reduce and intensify without sufficient valid fact checking. This group I think can be divisive and toxic in society and in a business context can be unsafe as a basis for good decision making. So next time you feel that us EAs are getting a hard time as we proffer yet another opinion or, or fact check a question, remember, that is the most valuable regulation that exists. Welcome everybody to uh, this edition of Toolkit Tuesday, special edition. Um, thank My thanks uh, to you all for joining and um, as ever, uh, our thanks go to Paul Herman of IBM for his EA Minute there. Um, it is a great, uh, a great point he makes that that uh, it's not a bad thing for there to be many different uh, opinions and for for uh, thoughts to be uh, dissected a bit and pulled apart and uh, we all end up in a better place and that's part of what we do at the Open Group when we're creating standards. So uh, um, a, a great thought there, Paul, thank you as ever. So as I say, welcome today. Our theme today is uh, cybersecurity and specifically our Open Trusted Technology Provider Standard here at the Open Group. And um, we have some great speakers on that. Just a, a, a couple of housekeeping points uh, before I introduce them, though. Um, uh, for those of you not familiar with the WebEx tool, or maybe it's a while since you've used it, um, if you have questions for the uh, speakers today, please put them in the Q&A channel. Um, uh, that if you don't know where that is, you'll see three little dots in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. If you click on those, that will give you the option to open the Q&A um, uh, Q&A uh, option. And if you want to communicate with other people on the call, uh, other people at the meeting, uh, please use the chat channel. Um, you'll see uh, a few of us have started putting in where we're joining from. Uh, Toolkit Tuesday always has a global audience. We love hearing where you're all from. So uh, uh, please, if you get the opportunity and can work out the chat channel, then uh, please tell us where you're joining from. We'd love to uh, love to see you here. So um, without further ado, I'll introduce today's speakers. Uh, and we have uh, three actually today. So we have David Kaiser is the Senior Director of the Product Security Office at Seagate Technology. David drives the company's strategy to deliver cyber resiliency throughout the product lifecycle to protect the products and the data they contain. Also presenting with David today, uh, another of our members, Christine Bunke is a senior engineer in the IBM System Supply Chain Engineering Group. She leads teams globally to apply the IBM Printed Circuit Board Assembly Qualification Specifications to new contract manufacturing suppliers. She represents IBM Supply Chain as a member of the SC uh, cybersecurity team. And to uh, introduce our topic today, uh, it's a great pleasure to introduce a colleague of mine, John Linford. 
Um, John is the Forum Director of the Open Group Security Forum and the Open Trusted Technology Forum, and he supports the leaders and participants of the Security Forum in utilising the resources of the Open Group to facilitate collaboration and to follow the Open Group standards process in order to publish their deliverables. As I say, our theme today is the Open Trusted Technology Provider Standard, and you will know more about this than when you started. I will hand over to John Limford. Welcome, John. Great. Thank you so much, Steve. Uh, I'm going to be kicking us off today. So just really briefly for our agenda, I'm going to give a little bit of a background about where the Open Trusted Technology Provider Standard or OTTPS came from and its intended purpose. And then we're going to get to hear a couple of great use cases from David Kaiser and Christine Bunke on how Seagate Technology and IBM are using the standard and some additional benefits that they've seen from implementing it. Uh, I'll then wrap us up with just a very quick overview of some awesome work that's come out from NASA Soup, the Solution for Enterprise Wide Procurement Program, uh, looking at cross map between this standard, the OTTPS, and a couple of NIST documents. And then we'll go into our QA. The OTTPS came out of uh, some actually government concerns about being able to purchase commercial information and communication technology products. Uh, they didn't want everything that they purchased to need to be custom. And so this came to a request to industry to work together to identify a set of common practices that all of these companies would be able to adhere to in order to enhance their supply chain security practices. Ultimately, it led to enhancing security across the entire product lifecycle from design and sourcing uh, through fulfillment and distribution and even going all of the way through to disposal. The OTTPS identifies best practices and processes across the technology development and supply chain security uh, parts of the product lifecycle, looking at producing a resilient full lifecycle approach so that industry can build with integrity and customers can buy with confidence. Uh, we have ultimately seen very good adoption, especially in recent years of this standard. And to give a little bit more about how this standard is being used, I'll go ahead and pass it straight over to David. Excellent. And I want to thank you, John, and thank you, Steve, for, for having us here today. And uh, Really warm welcome to all of those that have spent the time with us to in order to attend today. So let's have a look at this. Let's take a look at the three major domains of, of this standard. It, it contains the product development engineering methods, the secure development engineering methods, and the secure and the supply chain security. In total, there are 86 requirements that span across all of these domains. I will spend a few moments explaining each domain. I'd like to take people through the experience of, of what it would be like to get your first product certified. And then a lot of the benefits of the commonality and scale when you execute subsequent certifications on top of the baseline. Importantly, over the test of time, there's strong benefits to uh, business continuity, to maintaining the business knowledge and the workflow over time. It also has strong inputs into, the, into marketing, the security posture of the company to the, the communications that are held with the customers and the intake of customer security inquiries where a lot of this is asked about. So starting with product with uh, product development, when you take a look at that domain, what you see are basics and fundamentals that would likely be utilized by any organization that is producing firmware, software, and hardware. Taking a look at secure development, one would also naturally expect product remediation and patching to also be an integral part of any organization making a product. However, where this domain starts to stand out is in the threat and vulnerability analysis. Obviously, there's elements of that that are aligned to the product, but what I found interesting is that there are requirements that align into the organization's process, 
the process that the people have in the company to monitor the threat landscape and act upon it. This includes um, assessing department tools and techniques and equipment and process and make improvements to address the changes to the ever-changing threat landscape. As we look at supply chain product security column, this goes far beyond the scope of a development activity. And quite, and quite candidly, it goes far beyond what a development organization would really think or concern themselves about because the, the organizations in that part of a, of a corporation depend on corporate level functions to uh, protect them, to protect the work and to protect the product, which includes things like supply chain risk, physical security, information security, counterfeit, and the all important business partner security. Let's spend a moment talking about the experience getting a first certification in a company. One of the first things you're gonna to need to think about is are you gonna go with, a, with an independent Ex, uh, trained um, independent third party assessor, or will you exercise the option that the that is allowed in order to do a self assessed path? From there, you need to think about what's the product line. You're going to do a single product or a, a product family. When you're thinking about the scope, you need to include everything that will ship in the product firmware and hardware. It's also important to be thinking about firmware and software used to manufacture the, the product as well. Also important to be including the geographic sites that uh, where all of this work is executed so that, that all the activity in the supply chain area, such as physical security and information security are properly factored in. Now, with that achieved, an organization might come around and strive to do another product. Um, and when you do that, you're going to be really looking at the areas now that I highlighted in the yellow or gold border. All of those will have to be acquire the overall assessment documentation. What an organization will find is that really teaching and training the people to, to uh, do that work is greatly accelerated when utilizing prior examples. As the expression goes, success will breed success. So having that is really integral. However, even though the next organization may get the benefit of seeing documentation for process or using it, they themselves have to provide evidence of implementation into the assessment team that it is being done. And physical footprints have to be validated or updated and corporate controls need to be updated, assured and make sure that they are on point for the new product that is added in, into the certification footprint. A few benefits to business continuity. As years press onward in a corporation, having strong documentation and implementation evidence is an asset when striving for resilience to personnel changes or loss and so on. The documentation assets will support the teaching and training of the people that carry on this work from the founders that originally put it in place. It's part of the world in which we live in with a changing, a changing corporate landscape, basically people and, and footprint. And lastly, when we take a look at the benefits to marketing product security and to customer communications, for all of us, malware in the product and counterfeits that could enter the, enter the market are top of mind, as well as, as well as business partner security of the third parties. Having a transparent security outcome up into the OTTPS standard which is architected to focus on the supply chain lifecycle controls and confront these threats head on is beneficial to protecting the supply chain and demonstrating the security posture of, of the company. The certification to this standard is beneficial to the marketing messaging, to customer communications and invaluable to customer security inquiries. I have seen that the existence proof 
of, uh, of being certified has often closed the, the inquiry stream quickly as it is a recognized standard and really brings immediate trust and confidence. Always having the knowledge, been, knowledge and the documentation and the assets in place help establish a company's personnel network of where all these things get done, who is the execution people, and how does it get done. When it comes to customer security inquiries, I'm going to introduce Christine, that is one of her major themes, and we'll hand it over here. Thank you. Thank you very much for that nice introduction. And I'd also like to thank the open group and Steve and John for inviting me to speak today. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, the IBM use case and how we are using it to address client inquiries. Um, so there we have seen, I'd say in the last 4 to 5 years, especially increasing requests for security integrity evidence. Um, throughout our supply chain, and um, this is uh, being addressed by IBM by a standard approach. We feel this drives business value, and it also allows us uh, to demonstrate and certify our business processes that they are um, solid. And um, the reason we're seeing this increase. Uh, in requests for evidence is because of our clients. Um, we've seen a significant increase in client inquiries, especially in the sectors where IBM is particularly active and that's uh, finance and banking, uh, utility and energy and government sectors. Um, these questionnaires inquiries that we are seeing are in, usually in the form of questionnaires and they could be unique to a particular client or they could be common to an entire sector, say driven by uh, an industry standard group, or they could reference a, a particular standard uh, that we we're asked to uh, certify to. This is uh, um, driven by the fact that hardware suppliers must be concerned with both IT um, and OT, that is operational uh, technology security, as well as our information uh, technology security. Um, these kind of uh, concerns include business continuity, protecting the data that we possess, our uh, physical assets, and of course, ensuring that we don't have counterfeit parts entering our supply chain. Um, Collateral and or standard certifications must be obtained in advance to these inquiries uh, because often our clients are demanding a response in hours or, or days. Um, and we must uh, ensure the alignment of the standards to the content of what our clients are asking us in typical questionnaires. Uh, so, this, having this all done in advance definitely helps you respond to your clients in a thorough and timely manner. Uh, next slide, please. So, uh, when we uh, decide to address this using a standard approach, we had to select a standard um, to certify to. Uh, you know, there, as you may know, there are many standards um, throughout the industry. Uh, to certify to, and it would be unnecessarily burdensome and expensive and time consuming to certify to every standard. So, what we did is we took uh, recommendations, uh, particularly from our clients based on their input and requests on, on what they would like to see and what kind of questions they're particularly concerned about. And we also wanted to have a standard that was open and that it's available to all the stakeholders in the process, including our clients, our business partners, and our suppliers. Um, we wanted it applicable to multiple market segments. So uh, it, in one year, you may have a lot of activity from the utility industry. The next might be government. 
the next might be banking. So you have to be able to respond to all these different business sectors. Um, we would like it to be flexible and uh, in scope to uh, to apply as needed to address maybe a particular product line or a specific product or all the um, products that a company might be producing. And we needed it to span the life cycle of a particular uh, product or product line, including development, uh, product security, and especially supply chain. So in this process of standard selection, we settled on OTTPS ISO 20243. We feel it provides uh, value to the company. Um, it's an international standard that demonstrates conformance to, uh, as uh, was noted, 86 different requirements. It assures best, best practices throughout the product life cycle, including supply chain. And uh, in particular, our clients are asking for product supply chain uh, integrity assurance. So this, this standard supplies that. And um, I guess most importantly, in my mind, is it pro provides collateral to satisfy these integrity assurance questions. Um, and it reduces risks. And the way it reduces cybersecurity risks is it, it forces you to examine your whole product life cycle and address gaps that could come up. And this in itself, will reduce the risk. Uh, the risk is never non-zero, but you want to have your uh, cybersecurity risk as low as possible, and OTTPS certification certainly helps uh, address that. So, um, John, do you want to take over on the next slide, please? Great. Thank you so much, Christine, and to David as well. Uh, so we've heard a couple of great use cases of organizations that have actually applied the standard to their products or product lines. Uh, we've also seen great work about sort of overlap or harmony with the OTTPS, which is technically equivalent to ISO 20243. They are actually the exact same contents, uh, just in our different templates. Uh, and one of the groups that is a big advocate for this standard is NASA's Solution for Enterprise-Wide Procurement Program. Uh, their government-wide acquisition contract vehicle. Uh, a year or so ago, maybe a little bit longer, they completed a review of the standard and crossover between several NIST documents, including Special Publication 800-161, now 161 Revision 1, and NIST IR-7622. And what they found was great harmony between these documents. What that means is if you are one of those organizations that does a lot of work with government, uh, that you need to show conformance or compliance to these NIST publications, and OTTPS certification is going to do a lot to help you meet those requirements and provide, as we've heard, additional value above and beyond what it says on the 10 of mitigating malicious taint and counterfeit products from being sold. What's particularly interesting about this is that the SOUP program uh, doesn't manufacture products. Instead, they're sort of the customer side of it. So we see this great support of requiring the vendors to government and requiring or requesting this certification from manufacturers because they know that the integrity of the products they're going to receive is going to be higher. What that means is that if you are a manufacturer, we've heard the value and the benefit of obtaining certification internally. And if you're a customer of these organizations, this is a certification that you might look at in requesting your manufacturers obtain so that you know that the products you're getting integrity. Uh, so thank you so much for listening to our Toolkit Tuesday session. We are hard at work in the next iteration of the standard. We put out a new version last year that is now ISO 20243-2023. And we are hard at work updating the certification program. Of course, as with everything from the open group, the standard is free to access and download from the library. And you can also access the certification register of those organizations that have completed their certifications. So thank you all so much for tuning in uh, and back to you, Steve. Thank you, John, um, and uh, and to Christine and David. Um, great overview uh, on Toolkit Tuesday. We always have uh, 
uh, it's a test of people to get through uh, a lot of a lot of material uh, on a topic in a in a short time. But uh, you've done a great job today. Thank you very much for doing that. So um, we'll move to uh, to a couple of questions, if I may. Um, and uh, it's always good when you've got people who've been through uh, been through the experience of using one of the standards um, to to share what you've kind of learning points mm -hmm. from that. So. Um, if you would, uh, what, what advice would you give to somebody who's perhaps in a product security role right now, who's uh, starting down the path of a, an OTTPS uh, uh, certification? Anything you've learnt that you would, uh, any, any, uh, any, any do's or not do's? Absolutely. I David, David's I, keen to go for that one. I can try <laughs> to give a, a start at that one. I would say that when you first look at it, it is a daunting task and it is, um, I think that one of the key things is um, it's is having a champion. You really do need, this is a top-down activity. Um, this is something that really the organization needs to commit to um, at the C-suite or the near C-suite level and at the vice president level. And then I really think what's important is taking a look at the standard and starting to make the assignments across the company for hardware design and firmware design and factory process design and all the different functions and establish your really the who who were the roster of the participants start with that get that signed up uh, and then establish the roster and then have the kickoff meetings and start to do the training and then one foot in front of the other um over over a journey right and uh, and momentum builds and uh, before you know it you're uh, part way through the process yeah yes exactly a anything to add on that one christine or if not yeah I, I would say um in addition to that um great comment uh it's important to start early because you do need engagement from multiple sectors across your organization and uh, you can discover gaps and right. uh, you're going to need to work through those and that takes time. So that's my best advice is uh, not only assemble your team, uh, but make sure you, uh, you engage them early, I would say minimum six months, but I've, I've worked with a lot of our suppliers through this process and seen it take up to a couple of years. So that's that's my advice. That, that's great advice, thank you. Thank you both. Um, and something that you you both touched on, in fact, you're, all three of you touched on in your in your presentations um, was uh, being able to reference the certification, you know, wh what sort of scenarios does that does that come up in in your experience? You know, how often are you able to do that, mm -hmm. either internally or or externally with your customers? We get this quite often. We have clients asking us various questions, mm -hmm. uh, oftentimes in response to uh, their inquiries from their their customers. So I would say. That happens all the time. We happen to document uh, a, a, the standard questions that we see a lot. Um, we and we reference that. And uh, having the OTTPS certification is invaluable for uh, responding to our clients. And we've used we use it more often than not, if especially if they have supply chain security questions. Right. Right. Next. Right. I would certainly agree with that. Absolutely. And John, I, I know um, you uh, speak on this topic at, at various in industry events. Um, uh, and uh, it, it, how how would you describe the um, the the uh, uh, reception to this? I think. Well, I, I, I'll um, it, I'll rephrase that. Um, when I uh, Present uh, when I mention this from and it's a you know it's basically been uh, adopted by ISO as a formal standard. It gets a it gets a oh really that's very interesting. Is, is that something you you encounter as well? 
Absolutely. Being able to have that sort of extra assurance on top of our standards process that it's gone through the ISO publication process and has been approved several times over now definitely adds to that credibility of the value of the program and its integrity. Not that going through the open group standards process isn't enough, of course, but it helps to get extra credibility. Exactly. Yeah, I know. Ab absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, so last question then before we, uh, before we, uh, let people go get on with their days or evenings, uh, whatever they have. Um, is there anything you do differently? If you were starting out, I know we've talked about what advice would you give, but uh, anything you did differently um, in going through a, a, another set the next certification or anything you did differently between certifications and uh, where you've been through more than one. Yeah, I would, I would say that um, I think that what you learn is really, it's really critically important to establish the product scope. And to really make that as broad as possible, I'd say that over the test of time, again, as organizations change and maybe sentiment of what is important changes, you really want to have a really, really wide net of what you cast um, so that when you do all the work, um, you have captured as much of that product line as possible at the initial time of when you do the work because that product might not be considered important in that time frame but what i'm seeing is that it'll come in to the it'll come into the spotlight and so i would say that's what i think an organization would want to be really mindful of is to be as broad as possible even if at that moment it might not seem applicable that's that's great advice yeah uh, anything from you christine to on yeah, that topic? I would say um, as working through the process, it's really important to have education, um, both from your internally and from your suppliers on what the standard means and what the benefits are. I think that drives engagement and uh, really educates people to the benefits of, of having why we're going through the process and why we're asking all these questions. So yeah. that was, I think, the, one of the most important things in uh, working through the process is, is making sure people understand and are educated as to what, what this all means. Sure, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Um, David, Christine, John, we'll leave it there so, uh, so that we're almost on time. And um, I really appreciate your contributions. Uh, I will just say, I give, a, give a shameless plug uh, we are having an industry awareness day at our next uh, uh, summit of the open group, which is on uh, starts on Monday, the 28th of October in Houston. And one of the topics we're covering in the industry awareness days is the OTTPS or cybersecurity. Uh, John's nodding because I'm sure some of the workload will fall to him. Um, so uh, if anyone is listening who's uh, within reach of, uh, of the Houston area, then please come and join us. We've also got Aware, uh, awareness sessions on our OSDU standard, our open process automation standard, uh, EA practice, um, and uh, as I say, not the uh, the OTTPS standard as well as some of the work going on in our security forum. So um, end of shameless plug. But mm -hmm. my thanks again to our to our presenters today. Um, uh, thank you for having us. And uh, to all of you who've uh, uh, taken the uh, time to join us today, or you may be listening uh, in the comfort and uh, convenience of your own home uh, afterwards, because a lot of people listen to these on our YouTube channel. This one too will be posted there. Um, and I hope you can join us next time around. Our next uh, Toolkit Tuesday special edition is on October the 8th. Easy to remember, it's a Tuesday. And uh, the topic there, we're switching to healthcare and a value-based architecture for healthcare, uh, developing our OVBA standard. So if that's something that uh, is remotely interesting to you, I hope you'll join us. Meanwhile, please uh, be safe wherever you are, and uh, thank you for joining Toolkit Tuesday.